Welcome to this lesson on analyzing position time graphs. From position time graphs, we want to be able to um, find the following information. We need to be able to find position or time. Uh, we need to find distance and displacement. We need to find average velocity and speed. So I'll break the lesson into those three parts. Let's begin by using this example graph to see how we can find position or time. And we'll start with an example problem. Uh, let's say we want to know at uh, time equal to, oh, I don't know, let's say 7.0 seconds, what is the position? All right. So first of all, we need to, I guess, complete this graph. I don't have a total scale here. We can see on the time side, it goes by one. So every grid is one second. Uh, Let's say our position time graph, uh, the position goes by fives, so 5, 10, 15, this will be 20 meter mark. And then if we go down this way, minus 5, minus 10, minus 15, this will be the minus 20 meter mark. So we'll go with that for our scale. Um, and so let's see if we can answer our question. At 7 seconds, what is the position? In this case, um, all we really need to do is identify where is the 7 second mark. Here's time equal to 7 seconds, and we just follow it up and see, well, at that point, what is the position? We can see here that at time equal to 7 seconds, the position, and we use the term, uh, symbol D for position, D is equal to 20 meters. Um, we need to make a distinction when we record our position between the positive 20 meter mark and, say, this 20 meters down here. So we'll use a uh, positive, in this case, uh, sometimes you'll have enough information to be able to say whether it's north, south, east, west, up or down, forward or back. But for now, positive 20 meters is adequate for this graph. So you can see finding the position, it's simply a matter of looking it up on, uh, based on the time that you're given. Again, if we were asked at, say, a time equal to 12 seconds, 12 seconds is right here. What is the position? The position is somewhere around there. It looks like it's at about, uh, so when t is equal to 12 seconds, looks like our position is equal to, what do you call that, 5 meters? Yeah, I think it's pretty close to 5 meters on the positive side of our origin. When it comes to identifying times, we again just work from the information given. So in this case, uh, let's give you an example question. Let's say we want to know at, um, I don't know, let's say, yeah, at what times at what time is uh, the object at a position, um, well, let's say 10 meters on the positive side of the origin. So what time is the object at a position of 10 meters? So in this case, we'll work uh, just from the position, since that's the information given, there's the 10 meter in the positive position. So we go along and we see that uh, our graph at, at that position is lined up with the three second mark. So the answer here is when time is equal to 3.0 seconds, 3.0 right there, then position is 10 meters. But you'll also notice that we keep going along here. There's another time at which we're at the 10 meter mark, and that's about I don't know, what do you want to call that, 11.5, reading that scale? Looks like, and time equal to 11.5 seconds. Both those times were at a position of 10 meters. So determining position or time from the other piece of information is, is a matter of reading exactly off the graph what the piece of information is. Let's take a look at how we find distance and displacement. And just a reminder, distance is a scalar quantity. It's the uh, total uh, you know, of the travel distance. If you walk in a crooked line, you could straighten that line out. That's the distance, that straightened line, regardless of which way you went. Uh, if you're walking around a track, keep track of all your steps, and that's your distance. Displacement is simply what is your difference from your start position to your end position. So let's begin with uh, distance, and let's use the example of, well, let's use for the whole trip in this, for this example. So we'll start with distance. 
So if we look at the whole trip, and I want to find out the distance, and I'll try and do both here. So let's do distance here, see if I have enough room, and I'll put my displacement here. All right, try and keep it neat enough that we can read when we're done. Um, so for the whole trip, starting at time zero and position zero, ending over here at I think time is 14, and this is, uh, position looks like it's about, well, let's make sure there's our minus, our, there's our minus 20. Looks like to me this is like minus 40. Let's just identify a couple of these key points. Um, and there's my positive 20 mark. All right, starting with distance. So with distance, we're going to keep track of how far we travel. Uh, in this case, we have kind of three segments. If you notice in, in this segment right here, it lasts six seconds. And in the six seconds, um, we travel 20 meters. So in this part, we go 20 meters. In the next segment, we travel zero meters. And for the next segment, that lasts not that the time is especially important at this stage, but it lasts from about 11 seconds, I think it's about 3 seconds, is it? 4 seconds maybe? The object travels backwards, you'll see, from the positive 20 to 0, so there's 20, another 40, goes back 60 meters. So it actually travels 60 meters in the backward direction, but I'm not worried about direction when it comes to distance. I just know that there are three parts of this trip. One in which the distance is 20 meters, that's the first part. One in which the distance is 0 meters, and one in which the distance is 60 meters, for a total of 80 meters of total distance traveled. That's one, that's two, and that's three. So the total distance traveled is 80 meters. Let's compare that to what we find for the displacement. Displacement, we have a formula for, and, and really, displacement can be found if you were to take d2 minus d1, position 2 minus position 1, and the little vector arrows remind you that you need to take into consideration the direction as well as the magnitude. So, unlike distance where we added the 20 and the 0 and the 60 and we got 80 total meters, all we're really concerned about with here is where did we start? And we started at 0. So our position 1, D1, is equal to 0 meters. And our final position, we'll call that D2, is equal to minus 40. So in order to, to determine our displacement, we take our D2 minus 40, subtract our 0 meters, and we end up with a total displacement of minus 40 meters. Which, if you look at the graph, kind of makes sense. You'll see that we started at zero, and as we moved along the 14 seconds, the whole trip, we only traveled backwards 40 as the end result. We did a bunch of stuff in between, we went forward, backwards, stopped, but once everything was said and done, we started at zero, we ended at minus 40, so that's our displacement. So notice the difference here. We've got a distance of 80 meters. We have a displacement of negative 40. Distance is always going to be stated as kind of a, a positive number because we're only worried about the magnitude. It's a scalar quantity. But when you report the displacement, you need to report the direction. Right now we're just dealing with positives and negatives, but eventually we'll convert that into some direction, north, south, east, or west, maybe backwards or up or down. We'll get to that. All right, let's take it one more step further, and that is to find the average velocity and speed. I'm just going to label my diagram again just to make sure I know my key points at least. So 20 meters, minus 40 is where we end up. So let's do the same thing. In order to understand or see the differences between speed and velocity, let's analyze the whole trip and see if we can whoops see if we can determine the speed which is the scalar quantity here and the velocity here all right now this is average um, later on we'll talk about instantaneous velocities and speeds but for now let's look at the average velocities and speeds 
So starting with speed, remember speed is related to distance because if we took the distance divided by the time, delta d over delta t, we should get our speed. So going back to the previous slide, but I'll convince you again, we traveled, remember, in the first part of the trip, we went forward 20 meters, then we went zero for the next part of the trip, and then we went backwards like, what was it, 60. So we went a total of 80 meters in the entire trip, and the entire trip took us 14 seconds. So if we calculate our speed, we need to take 80 divided by 14. And I get 5.71 meters per second. So that's our average speed. You know, if you look at the graph, we were doing different speeds at different times. There was times we were moving forward and backwards, but on average, our speed is 5.71 meters per second. Let's compare that to our velocity. Now, velocity is a vector quantity, and it's related to the displacement, which we found earlier, but we'll just take a look at that again. For the whole trip, the displacement is from the very beginning to the very end, it's simply how far did we go? Well, remember we went backwards 40, so that's minus 40. Because it's a vector, it's important to put our sign or something indicating our direction. For calculation purposes especially, negative works the best. So we went minus 40, and it took us a time of 14 seconds. So using our calculators, 40 divided by 14, I get an answer of 2.86 meters per second. And being a vector, I really want to be aware that I need to put a direction. Here's my really messy positive sign. All right, let's clean it up a little bit. So that's a grand total of positive 2.86 meters per second. So, as you can see, speed's related to distance. So if we can get distance, we can get the speed. Uh, velocity is related to displacement. Once we establish the displacement, we can calculate the velocity. So as you can see, each of these skills kind of builds on each other. Make sure you're good at finding position and time from the graph before you, because if you can't do that, you won't be able to do the distance and displacement. And until you can master distance and displacement, um, you won't be able to approach finding speeds and velocities.